Echinococcus granulosis. Its scientific name is lengthy, but in reality, and especially in length, it's not. The tapeworm is a mere three millimeters long, but since it's linked to the wolf, it's causing a huge ruckus. The headlines are frightening to some, not so much to others. Though around for decades in sheep, wolves, coyotes, and others, the parasite recently came to greater light in a study published in the Journal of Wildlife Diseases. It stated 38 of 60 wolves examined in Montana and 39 of 63 in Idaho had Echinococcus granulosis. The tapeworm does exist in um, the larval form or the egg form in the wolf and then it shed in feces or scat. Uh, the eggs then can be in the environment on vegetation that could be eaten by eaten by domestic livestock or wild ungulates, and then it develops into a cyst in the ungulate, whether it's the deer, the elk, the moose, or domestic livestock. That cyst can be deadly as it grows in an animal and spreads to others, but how much of a danger there really is depends on who you talk to. You know, I've heard it called, what, the, age, the new age of North America or something like that. It's just people kind of over-exaggerating. It is not a disease to fool around with, particularly with multiple infections when you have a multiple cysts growing in the body. Bangs and Geist do agree it can be dangerous, even fatal to humans, since both know someone who died from the tapeworm. For Bangs, it was a young man in Alaska. For Geist, his grandfather in Russia. In both cases, domestic dogs acquired the disease by eating the infected liver or lungs of downed, diseased ungulates. But the degree of danger to humans from infected animals, especially dogs, is where they differ. Once the uh, dog is infected, it begins to infect the yard with its feces and probably the inside of the house as well. Humans are not the natural host. The chance of being infected are extremely low. And basically, if you just wash your hands after handling wolves, coyotes, foxes, or dogs, you'll be fine. Now, I talked to the lead researcher of the study, William Forett from Washington State University, and he said, in his words, the media overplayed all this. Whatever the case, because of the outcry and the finger pointing, both Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks and Idaho Fish and Game released in Kinococcus fact sheets. The goal is to make more people know about it. They say the more they know, the better off they'll be.